Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Jason, or Easy Cat, as much of the internet knows me as. Uh, and I'm so glad to see you here. I hope you're having a lovely day. Today, we're going to be talking about all of the manga that I read in November. I've been saying for months now that I'm going to make a video that every month I'm like, I'm going to make a video about all the manga I read, and then I never do. Um, <laughs> so this is going to be my first time doing like a true manga roundup. So we'll see how this goes. I, you know, if you have ideas or if there's a manga you want to see me read and talk about, please feel free to leave that in the comments. And while we're talking about all that stuff, make sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. That way you know when I post a new video. If you want to see all the books that I read in November, I posted that video already and it's already on my page and you can go look at it right now, but not right now because we're going to talk about manga. And then afterwards you can go, you know, just hang out here for a little bit, but it is there if you want to see it. Obviously, in talking about manga, uh, we're going to be talking about, like, books that are in the middle of series. So some things I'm going to talk about are number ones. Some things are going to be, like, number five or six. I will do my best to not spoil anything. I'll just kind of tell you the general vibes, if I'm enjoying it, if I'm going to keep reading it or not, um, and give you kind of a quick rundown of what it's about just in general. Because if you're also reading these series, or if you decide to read them, I don't want you to jump in uh, to something I'm talking about, like, book eight of, and be spoiled. That would be no fun. So I'm going to be really, really careful to not have any spoilers here. But I will give you kind of the general gist of the story so that you understand what you're getting into. That being said, let's talk manga. Let's do it. Let's go. Let's come on. Let's go. Okay, first up, and honestly, if I tell you to read anything in this stack, it's going to be this one. This was Shuna's Journey by Hayama Miyazaki. So this is a reprinting of a story, like one of his older stories um, that came out quite a long time ago. You can see how this inspired a lot of his work. It is printed in full color. Um, it is... Oh, Stunning. Stunning. If you like Studio Ghibli, if you like Miyazaki, if you like his stories, especially things like Princess Mononoke, um, or um, uh, Howl's Moving Castle a little bit, I got some of those vibes, but definitely Princess Mononoke. If you like stuff like that, you must, you must read this. It's so good. It's so good, and it's so beautiful. It's standalone. It's just one book. Um, it's so good. <laughs> it's so pretty. Every page is a work of art. Um, it has all of those Ghibli vibes. It has all of those early Ghibli vibes. So I feel like later Ghibli gets a little bit, you know, I think early Ghibli, there's, I, I like everything. And then later Ghibli, like, eh, that's okay. Or that was all right. Ah, oh, that kind of missed the mark. But this is like early Ghibli when like everything was a like perfect, perfect, perfect. So good. Can't recommend enough. Shuna's Journey, you must read. Next up, I read the first volume of The Abandoned Empress. This, eh, this was wild. <laughs> wild. Okay, so this is like a Regency story. It's like a Regency drama, but it's like the most dramatic Regency drama I've ever read. Like every chapter I was like, what? Um, it has some like isekai elements to it. Um, it also, I, I can't tell you a lot without spoiling things, but, but there, it just, it's like the author was like, let's look at what kind of drama is in all these other mangas and try to put it all into this one story. <laughs> It is wild. Like, so much happens in this. And I, I, every chapter, I was constantly like, where is this story going? What kind of story is this? Because it would almost, like, change uh, its general, like, what was the main thing it was doing very, very quickly. Like, it bounced around a lot. And it all made sense. But, it, I mean, it was, cr it was crazy. Like, I was not expecting. There are some twists and some turns, for sure. I don't know if I'm going to keep reading it. It's, it's a little much. It's so dramatic that it feels soap opera-y. Um, and I've heard, I've had some people tell me that it's not, it does not have a very good ending, <laughs> which unfortunately makes me like, do, how much time and do I want to commit to this, right? If you like over the top drama and you like over the top Regency drama and you like political intrigue, it's here. It's here. I would, I would tell you to at least maybe check out the first one if any of that sounds interesting to you and then decide for yourself because this is a wild book and I think people are going to respond to it in very different ways. So that is The Abandoned Empress. All right, next up, I read volume five of Ancient, Mag Ancient Magus Bride. I can't talk. Um, this series continues to make me feel uh, mixed emotions. <laughs> so on one hand, I really like the magic and the world, and it has this very like cozy cottage core magic, um, almost like, uh, I want to say like pagan or like Norse kind of mythology magic to it. That could be wrong. I'm sorry if I if I'm mis misinterpreting the kind of magic or fantasy that's in this, but um I love all of that. Uh, what I don't love, the main relationship between uh this young woman and this kind of her like master, it 
it feels a little icky to me. I, and I, I don't love it. It's never like, it's never been, it's never hit a point where I've been like revolted by it, but there are definitely moments where I, I can feel my face going like, <laughs> so, but I keep reading it. I don't know. It's, it's a, it's, it's a little wild. Um, overall, I, I just, I love the world so much that I kind of push through their relationship, which is not my favorite part, my least favorite part of the book, because I want to see more of the world. Um, the world is stunning and the magic of the world is stunning and the stories being told about the world and the magical beings living in it are so good and so emotionally driven and so beautiful. It's just that the main relationship feels a little weird to me. <laughs> um, I don't know if weird is the right word. It just, it, it's, it's not going to be for everyone. I'll just tell you that the, the main relationship and the way that it is described and the way that it is portrayed is not going to be for everyone. But I, I think you kind of just have to decide for yourself if it's worth pushing past that to see more of this beautiful world that's kind of hiding behind them, which for me, it still is. I'm going to pick up number six and then we'll go from there. Every book of this, I'm, this is like, for me, this is like a TV show that every season, uh, when the season ends, you're not sure if it's going to get renewed. So you're like waiting. That's how I feel about this series. Like every book I read, I'm like, is this going to be the last one I read? Is this going to be it? Am I going to hit a point where I'm like, no, I can't do this anymore. And I keep going. So <laughs> see what happens. I read two volumes of this book this month. So I'm just going to talk about them at the same time, um, which was Berserk. I am reading this for the first time. Uh, this is a very dark fantasy, 18, parental advisory, explicit content in these books. Um, it is very dark. Every, I, every possible content warning I can think of, I would give these that content warning. It is, it is, uh, it's one of the darkest, it's probably the darkest manga that I've ever read. Um, but damn, it's so good. It's so good. I mean, it's so good. It's so like the dark, I don't all, I don't love dark fantasy all the time. And, but this is just, uh, the artwork is stunning. Um, some of the character work is so subtle, but so intriguing to me. Um, it's, it's just, it's a work of art. I, that's, that's the only way to talk about Berserk. It is a work of, of art. It is a work of just, uh, every panel has so much love and care and, and beauty drawn into it. Um, and it is dark. It is so dark, uh, but it is also so good. I'm really enjoying my journey in this series. And it's also a series that has surprised me. So it's a series when I read the first book, I was like, wow, this is gorgeous. But it's pretty light on plot. Like it kind of just felt like, oh, I'm going from one place to another, killing a bunch of stuff. But I, you know, I read, I was like, I'm going to keep reading it because it's just, the, I love the art. It's so stunning. But now we're starting to get into much more of the actual like character work and the actual like overall story. And uh, it's a series that just gets better with every book. Every book I read of it, I'm like, oh, this is even better than the last one um, because we're really starting to dig into this world and the characters in it. And uh, it's a book that has surprised me in that way that I did not think it was going to get, uh, give have the depth that it's starting to have. Um, and I'm really happily surprised by that. So uh, if you probably, if you, I'm probably the last person to ever read this. You've already probably read this. You've already, you already probably love it. But uh, if you haven't read it and you like really grim, dark fantasy, whew, it's really good. We'll make this one quick and sweet and short. This is The Country Without Humans. Eh. <laughs> it's just, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's about like the last human and, and the world is run by robots and uh, all the robots that kind of their main directive is like to protect this young girl. And it's really just okay. I wanted it to be a lot better than it was, but it feels really, uh, the storytelling feels very amateur and it just really didn't capture me. I'm not planning to read any more of this, uh, just cause I, I walked away just like, yeah, eh, meh, meh. it was just all right. So I, I'm going to pass on this, but you know, maybe someday I'll hear that the series gets really good and then I'll pick it up later. But for me, this was just a meh. I read volume two of Bo Fury. Uh, this series is so fun. So the subtitle is, I don't want to get hurt, so I'll max out my defense. It's about a young woman who starts playing her first MMORPG. She doesn't, uh, it is a virtual MMORPG. So if you get hit in the game, you feel pain. She doesn't ever want to feel pain. So she maxes out her defense and ends up like breaking the game and she becomes super strong. This is not her. This is her friend uh, who also finds ways to break the game. It's very funny. It's very lighthearted, but it's also just really fun. Like it's a very enjoyable light read. I love the two main characters. Oh, with my whole heart, I love them. They're so delightful. They're so funny. Um, it is also a book that is very much just like, it very much focuses on the friendship between these two girls. Um, and they're both just delights. They're just great characters that I want to keep reading and reading and reading. Um, I'm just kind of getting into the series now. I watched the, uh, quite a bit of the anime first, but I really like it. And if you're looking for something light and fun and like 
uh, Sword Art Online, but uh, fun and light and not with all the dark elements of Sword Art Online. Uh, this, it's, it's, it's just the joy to read. So yeah. I put off reading this one, this next one, for a long time, and I now feel stupid for doing so. Now, I don't, I haven't looked up how to say the title, so I'm probably going to say it wrong, but I believe it is Mashley, um, or Mashley, um, Magic and Muscles. So this is very much a, uh, it's, it's very much making fun of the, like, magical school tropes. Um, it is about a character who is, like, the only person in his world who doesn't have magic. Everybody has magic, he doesn't, so he's maxed, he's, like, gotten really strong, so he's, like, really tough. And so he manages to be able to fight against magic users and wizards because of how strong he is, just physically. Um, I don't usually... Uh, comics... Uh, mangas that are very, like, um, joke-driven or, like, s are, are almost, like, satire a little bit, I, a lot of times I, I have a hard time getting into them because they're just a little too silly for me. But this is great. <laughs> I find it funny. I like the main character. I like the world. I like the jokes I think are really well done. Um, I like this way more than I thought I was going to. I was sure that this was going to be a big miss for me just because I don't typically love things in this like genre. But I loved it. I approve. I'm going to pick up volume two. I can't wait to read more. It was a pleasant surprise. All right, next up, I read volume three of The 86. Uh, so this is a book that deals with a world where there's like, uh, it deals very much with like racism, to be honest. So it deals with a world where there's like this big city, all the people in it um, living peacefully, and they send the people that are part of uh, for lack of a better word, a race that they don't care for to go fight on this battlefield for them to fight this war. And we're following a young woman who lives in the city and she is kind of their communicator. So she has like eyes on the whole battlefield. So she helps instruct them while we're also following the characters um, in the 86 who are fighting this war on the ground. Um, it's very dark. It has uh, definitely has like kind of some Attack on Titan vibes. So if you like Attack on Titan, I think you would probably like this. It's really good. It's really emotional. Um, it's got a really, really interesting world building and story. Really great characters. Um, it's very dark. I think I might have already said that. Um, but I really like it. And the only thing I don't like about it is these volumes are coming out too slow. I had to wait forever volume three. Now I probably have to wait forever volume four. I need them to publish faster because I get to the end and I'm like, I need the next one. And then it's not coming out for like ever. So really like this. Like I said, if you like stuff like Attack on Titan, I think you should definitely check this out because it's very good. I read volume eight of Beastars. I, <laughs> this series has such a weird hold on me. I don't know what that says about me as a person. I'm, I'm kind of obsessed with it. I, <sighs> it's wild. It's very adult. If you haven't read Beastars, it is a, it's like, it's like Zootopia for adults. Uh, it's like dark Zootopia. Um, it is, uh, but I, I don't know. I, I like the artwork a lot. I like the story. I, I don't, I would, I would describe this as a guilty pleasure. <laughs> I don't, I don't love telling people I love it so much. Cause I feel like, I don't know what that says about me, but <laughs> I don't want to tell you, I really like it. And it's, it's a wild book. Oh, uh, but it's so good. <laughs> It's like, I'm, I'm like addicted to it in the worst of ways. All right, next up, I read Dororo, uh, The Legend of Dororo and Hakimaro. So uh, Dororo the anime is based on an older manga, which I have, I have the complete collection. And this is a newer manga that is based on the anime because the anime changed a lot of things from the older manga. I would tell you to skip this and just watch the anime because it's the exact same story and the anime is just so much better. There's so much like fighting and a lot of the anime is just like, a lot of what makes the anime good is the really stunning artwork. The story is great, but the, the stunning artwork of the actual fights and the way that the battles are illustrated is a big piece of what makes the anime good. And you just don't get that at all from this. Um, and I would tell you to just do yourself a favor. You don't need this. Just watch the anime. You'll be happy. You'll be happy you did. So there you go. <laughs> Next one is not a manga. So um, I'm gonna have to change the title of this video to manga and graphic novels, but I'm gonna be trying to add a little bit more graphic novels into these videos and into my monthly reads. So I read the first volume of Middle West. Um, this is a um, comic book series. I believe there's three books because it's already finished. So I think there's only three stories. That's a weird page to open to. There's like a naked man. Um, <laughs> what? Beautiful art, beautiful art. So it is story of a young man who kind of set in like a Midwestern town, but it has like a lot of, there's like, you know, magic and elements of things going on. 
and his mom has left and he has a very tumultuous relationship with his father. One day his father turns into a tornado, rips the town apart, and the young man runs away. And so we're following his story as he's ran away and like the different people and places that he goes. Sometimes it's a little too on the nose with the with the story it's trying to tell. Like I kind of wish it had been a little bit more subtle. Um, and I feel like they're going to try and make us want to like uh, like feel bad for the dad, even though he's pretty awful. He's pretty abusive. So I don't know that I really want to sympathize with him, even though I feel like that's going to happen at some point. Um, but the art is stunning. There are a couple points in the story where I feel like it slows down maybe a little too much. I wish the pace had been a little bit better. Um, but I liked it uh, quite a bit. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know how much I would recommend it. I don't know if you need to put this to the top of your reading list. But if you're looking for something that is um, a little bit like older young adult, comic book wise that has like some elements of uh like a midwestern but magical type of story you might check this out because it was it was definitely different than a lot of things that i've read almost like a dark wizard of oz maybe a little bit yeah i could say it's kind of like a dark middle of uh, dark dark middle america wizard of oz kind of sure do you feel convinced i don't <laughs> All right, next up, I read A Man, and I read I read two cat books in a row. So this is A Man and His Cat. Um, this had no business being as good as it was, and it was very emotional, and it was very beautiful. It's about an older gentleman whose wife has passed away, so he adopts this kind of ugly-looking cat, and you kind of see the cat's thoughts on their relationship, and, and you, kind of, you kind of see the story through the cat's eyes of this old man kind of, like, welcoming this cat into his life. It's so, so wholesome, and it's also kind of sad, but, like, in a nice way, like in a in a happy tears kind of way. Um, really lovely. I already picked up volume two. I'm going to read it this month. But like, very cute. Like, I don't know, nothing about this cover said to me like, this is going to be an emotional journey about cats and the love for cats and how and how having a pet can help you deal with grief. And then it was and I was like, Oh, well, okay, well, this is delightful. So I really like this and I would highly recommend it. A man and his cat. Next up is Cat Gamer. I told you, two cat books in a row. Cat Gamer is uh, not what I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be a, big, a cat that plays video games. And it wasn't, and I was a little bit disappointed about that. But actually what it's about is a young woman who is a hardcore video gamer. Like she maxes out everything, 100% everything. And she ends up adopting a cat. And we see like how the cat kind of disrupts her life a little bit. And we also see, <laughs> she like interprets everything that's going on with the cat as like, uh, like in the terms of video games. So at one point the cat gets fleas and she's like, it's got a status condition, right? Like she kind of sees the cat in her life through the lens of a gamer. It is very cute. I did pick up volume two. I, I'm not 100% sold on this series yet. I feel like the gimmick could get old very quickly, but I did think this was cute. And I think if you're a cat lover and a gamer, I, th I think you'll enjoy it quite a bit. I mean, I, I enjoyed it a lot for the cuteness that it was and for the aspects of like, I could see things that have happened in my actual life with my cats and video games in it. Um, so I think, I think for the right person, this is going to be a lovely read. I don't think everybody needs to run out and get this if you're a manga fan, but I think cat people, gamers, gamer cat people, you're going to enjoy this for sure. Okay, so I picked this one up because at some point, I guess I picked up the sequel and I didn't realize it was a sequel until I opened it and realized it was a sequel. So I picked up the first one. This is Deco Boco Sugar Days. Uh, this is just a story, like a cute little quick one and done. There is a sequel, but this is standalone by itself. This is really just a cute story uh, about two boys who fall in love um, and and their, and their little journey. And it's cute. It's pretty low stakes. It's, is it the best like BL manga I've read? Absolutely not. Do you need to run out and pick it up? Absolutely not. But if you get a chance to read it, it is pretty cute. I will say it is a little a little risque at points, which were actually, I that was probably my least favorite part of it because I, I just didn't think it needed it. Uh, sometimes when BLs are, get a little bit, ex get a little bit in that way and it doesn't feel needed, it feels very fan servicey, And that's kind of what how this felt to me. It felt a little fan servicey. Um, but I, overall, I like the two characters and I like the story. I just don't think this, this definitely doesn't stand out from the pack as far as BL manga goes. So yeah, it's all right. All right. Um, I just rearranged some things. I'm going to save the best for last. So next up I read Frieren. I think that's how you say it. Frieren, uh, Frieren, Frieren. I don't know, but this is volume three. This series is about a, a young, well, not a young, but a very old elf. And she has, the first book starts with her having finished an epic quest with a hero. And uh, they all go their separate ways. And she, of course, outlives all of them because she's an elf. And so we kind of get to see her, like, 
figuring out what to do with the rest of her life. Uh, it's very, it's very lovely. And I really like the characters and I really like the world and I really like the stories that are being told in this world. Um, I especially like the way that we see things, how she has, you know, we see how her journey before this series took place, like, um, with the hero, how that has affected her as a person now. And she's able to kind of pass on that knowledge. Um, I just think it's really, it's just a really unique story. If you've ever watched or watched the anime Mushishi, which is very kind of like, uh, this guy travels from town to town and kind of takes care of like evil yokai or spirits or in, in people's lives to help them. This kind of feels like that, but with a little bit more of an overarching story and more characters than just like the one main character. Uh, it's definitely cozy fantasy. It does have some action and some dark points, but it's, it's, I just really like it. It's, it's, it's a light, cute read. And I, I think it's a series that I hope more people get into because uh, every book I think opens up the world and the plot and the characters in even more in interesting ways. And I love that she's sort of starting to put to, even though she's like done with adventuring, she's sort of starting to put together her own new little like ragtag group of adventurers. And I like all of them so far. Like every character they've introduced, I've really enjoyed. So yeah, I would check this out. All right, so last two, we have the gay who turned kaiju. I just finished this last night and I'm still sort of processing my thoughts about it. So it's about a young man who is gay and he finds out that uh, this teacher that he has a lot of respect for that he feels very safe around uh, is very homophobic and he gets so angry and he doesn't want to be himself anymore. So he ends up turning into a kaiju monster, um, like this big headed kaiju monster you see on the front. Um, and the book deals kind of with, um, you know, how we act around, like how, you know, people who are different feel, especially people who are different gender wise, like how they feel when they find out that people they care about, you know, don't support them. Um, the book also deals with like the depression that comes with being different or realizing that you're queer. Um, and there are, I, I will say there's some very beautiful moments, especially towards the end. There were some moments that I just, I felt like really landed really well and some really excellent moments. But there, I feel like sometimes the messaging of the book didn't quite, I, like, you know when you can tell what a book wants to do, but then you feel like it's not doing that correctly? <laughs> That's kind of how I felt about this. There were times where I was like, so it's like the point that queer people are monsters, uh, which I don't think that's the point. But there also kind of feels like there's a point where it, it's it's almost like the solution is to come out to your friends and family, right? Uh, and then they accept you and you don't have to be a monster anymore. But like, that's not really always the solution. Like there are a lot of people who can't come out to their friends and family or can't come out to their family because, um, you know, for whatever reason and even for safety reasons. And so that to me kind of missed the mark a little bit. But in the end, I really liked the final message of the book, which I won't tell you what that is because that's a spoiler. But the final message of the book and what ends up being kind of the solution I think was really good. It's just that along the way, there are some speed bumps along the way. This is, this is a standalone. You can read it by itself. To me, it was okay. There were definitely some, the, it ends on a high note. I think in the end, it, it nailed the landing, but it, it the execution throughout the entire book was not perfect for sure. And there were definitely moments where I was like, I don't know. But, um, yeah, it's it's a very interesting one. It's it's one that I'm still thinking about and still kind of processing if I liked it or not. But I think I liked it. I just didn't like everything about it. All right, my number one favorite manga that I read this month. Oh my god, Dinosaur Sanctuary. <laughs> Words cannot describe how much I love this. Uh, I'm so upset because apparently volume two does not come out till March. What? That's rude. So basically this is about uh, sort of a world where there's been a, there was an entertainment park which had, which genetically engineered dinosaurs, but then something bad happened. And now all the dinosaurs are in these sanctuaries being taken care of, um, by professionals. And what's great about it is there's a lot of science. There actually is like a science consultant involved. And every chapter ends with sort of a debrief on the science that was used to create that chapter. Um, Sometimes when when manga set out to be educational as well as like a manga, I feel like they're they do the educational part really well, but they don't actually do the like just regular storytelling part all that well. This I think does the regular storytelling part really well because I really liked the characters. I really like the the way that they're developing the characters. Um, I feel like I got to know them in a way that like, yes, I love the concept, but I also want to know what happens next to these main characters. I think that's so important in a book like this, that the concept has to sell and the concept has to work, 
but also you have to care, right? Like you have to care about the characters in this story or or you only get so far. Um, and I definitely left this caring about all of it. This was fantastic. I'm a huge Jurassic Park fan. This feels like a spiritual, like unofficial sequel to Jurassic Park. Um, I, I really love this. And I also really like that they're talking about dinosaurs as like living creatures and living animals and not just like bloodthirsty monsters. Like they're really talking about dinosaurs as like living creatures that have needs and wants and health issues. And I just, I just loved it so much. One of my favorite things I read this month. Um, I cannot wait for volume two. You will see me at the, I will be there the day it comes out buying it because this is, this is easily going to be one of my favorite manga series in for the next year. I love, 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 love. If you read one thing from this stack that I just talked about, this is the one. If you can only buy one, this is the one. So good. And that is all the manga that I read in November. Um, I hope you read some good manga this month. Let me know if you have read any of these. Let me know if there's something you saw here that you want to check out. Let me know if you enjoyed this manga video. I feel like a lot of my content is more book heavy, more like novel, prose, things like that. But as you can tell, I read a ton of manga and a ton of graphic novels, and I would love to have that be more of my page. Um, so I would love to hear your feedback. Did you enjoy this? Did you maybe find something new that you hadn't read before? Are you not a manga reader, but maybe saw something you'd want to try here? I want to hear your feedback. Let me know your thoughts. After of course, make sure to also like and subscribe, hit that notification bell, that way you know when I post a new video. I'm so happy you watched this. Thank you for being here and hanging out with me and talking about all of these manga and graphic novels. And as always, as always, happy reading.